Okay, everybody. So today we're going over introduction to graphing. And what we want to get out of today is what's a graph for? What does a graph show? And how can we use a graph to get us more information than what it just shows? All right, so we'll start out with what's the purpose of a graph? And the purpose of a graph is to show very quickly a visual representation of data collected, at least in science, in an experiment, in a controlled experiment, right? Um, so this graph here is one that uh, is kind of something from our biology unit that we just finished. It's the effect of temperature on the rate of photosynthesis, okay? So this person was running an experiment in which temperature was their manipulated variable. So they probably had several different plants, uh, each of which was, was uh, in a different environment, well, sorry, a similar environment with different temperatures. And what they recorded was the rate of photosynthesis. I would assume given the numbers here, since this graph doesn't have any units, that this would probably be in milligrams of oxygen uh, produced uh, in the experiment. Okay, so what we see here is that um, there's a relationship, obviously, between temperature and the rate at which a plant can carry out photosynthesis. And that relationship is positive for the first little while and then quickly kind of falls off. All right, so like we said, on a graph, there's two axes, okay? And the axes are the horizontal axis or the X axis and the vertical axis, which we call the Y axis. So it kind of goes along with what you learn in math. The X axis is always going to have the manipulated variable. The y-axis is always going to show our responding variable. That way, a graph can, as I said before, be a very quick visual representation of the relationship or the effect that the manipulated variable has on the responding variable. In the case of this experiment, we see that for a while, increasing temperature increases the rate of photosynthesis, but then at a, just after 30 degrees Celsius, that relationship abruptly ends and the rate of photosynthesis falls off very quickly. All right, so we're seeing there a very kind of quick and, and simple representation of what the experiment found. So hopefully everyone's kind of following that. Okay, so um, this is not a, a line graph. This is just a graph of this particular experiment. Most graphs uh, that we're going to deal with, at least in science, 10 are going to be what we call linear graphs. Okay, And that is that the relationship doesn't kind of fall off after a certain point. It shows a constant linear relationship. Okay, So this graph here is a graph of the effect of the number of sheets on the thickness of a book. Okay? So it's sort of an experiment where a person was uh, counting the number of pages in a book and then measuring how thick the book was. And they found, obviously, that as you increase the number of pages or sheets in a book, the thickness of the book gets bigger. All right, so that's what this graph is showing. All right, again, the x-axis is showing the manipulated variable, okay? And that is the number of sheets affects how thick the book is, okay? So this is our manipulated, our x-axis, and then this is our responding y-axis, All right? Now, you can see that these, uh, dots here are connected by a line. That doesn't usually happen. They don't always end up on the line exactly. Okay, so this isn't like you know when you were four years old and you got that book where you could you know connect the dots and it made a picture. Very rarely are any of the dots on your graph actually going to end up on the line. You'll still get a line, but the points won't necessarily be on it. Okay, so what this line is showing us is essentially that. Yes, as the number of sheets increases, the thickness of the book increases, but also that there is a, a kind of an average or a rate at which that thickness increases. Okay? We call that rate the slope of the line. Okay? So any linear graph is going to spit out a graphing or linear graphing equation. You may have seen this in math, written as y equals m times x plus b. Okay, so this, this graph here has that same um, equation. It just doesn't have the y equals part. So in this graph, the equation of the line is y equals 0.15x plus 5. Okay, so 0.15 is our slope. Okay, uh, x and y 
are any x or y value on or off the graph. Okay, and I'll explain that in a minute. And b is what we call our y-intercept. Okay, b is uh, in, on this graph five. It's where our line crosses the y-axis. Sometimes that's our starting point. Okay, so essentially on this experiment, that five is the thickness of a book with no pages. So um, essentially, it's just the cover. This is how thick a book with no pages would be, it just has the cover. Now you would probably argue that then it's not a book, uh, but that's kind of picking nits, okay? So we've got that a book with no sheets or no pages is going to be five millimeters in thickness, okay? So probably a paperback, obviously it wouldn't be a hard cover. All right, so what we see here is that um, as the, the number of sheets goes up, so does the thickness of the book. We've said that already, okay? But here's the rate at which that goes up. The slope of the line tells you essentially how steep the line is, and that is how fast does y increase with x, okay? So what this number here, this 0.15 is telling us is that, okay, we're going to see an increase of 0.15 millimeters for every sheet that we add. So essentially it's the thickness of one sheet of paper in the book. All right, so um, that will be in uh, millimeters per sheet because that is y over x millimeters per sheet of paper. And I'll tell you, I'll show you how I got to that in a minute. Okay, so y is any y value on the graph. So I can use this equation, y equals m times x plus b, in the case of this graph, that's 0.15 times x plus five, to calculate the number or the thickness of a book with whatever number of pages I decide. So let's say I wanted to figure out an, uh, the thickness of a book that's not on this graph. Let's say, you know, I'm reading, I don't know, War and Peace, which isn't like an incredibly long book. I have no idea how many pages. Maybe we can Google it. Hang on, we'll Google it. We'll find out how many pages it is. Okay, so my Google search is telling me that uh, War and Peace by Leo Tolstoy has 1,225 pages in it, all right? So we're gonna go back to this and I'm gonna plug that in as an X value because on my X axis is where I have number of sheets, okay? So I just found out that War and Peace is 1,225 sheets or pages, okay? So I'm gonna calculate how thick that book would be. Let's say I'm, you know, I've only got a little bit of room left on my bookshelf and I gotta fit this thing on there, okay? I gotta make sure that if I buy this book, it'll fit. So I'm going to put in that y, in this case, the thickness of worn piece, is 0.15 millimeters per sheet times 1,225 sheets or pages, okay, plus 5, the thickness of the cover. Okay, so essentially I'm calculating now the thickness of the book by taking how thick each page is, multiplying it by the number of pages, and adding the thickness of the cover. And that'll tell me how thick my book is. All right, so if I punch all that into my calculator, okay, I'm gonna have 0.15 times 1,225 pages plus five. All right, so War and Peace is going to be uh, 188.75 millimeters in thickness. Okay, that's pretty thick, right? Because that's that's 18.8, 8, almost 18.9 centimeters thick. All right, so this is a thick book, all right? Um, so that's how we would calculate the thickness of this book. The equation can also go the other way. If I knew the thickness of a book, I could calculate how many pages it is, all right? So I would be, in that case, not solving for a Y value, I'd be given a Y value. So if somebody tells me, um, figure out how many pages, or how many, sorry, how many pages are in a book that is, let's say, 100 millimeters thick, okay? So they just told me a thickness in millimeters. That's a Y value because it's on the Y axis, all right? I'm wanting to solve for the number of pages, which is an X value. So now I'm gonna take this formula y equals m times x plus b, and I'm going to manipulate it for x. Okay, 
So to manipulate this formula for x, I've got to follow my rules of algebra. Okay? My rules of algebra are, if I want to move something, I do the opposite. What I do to one side, I do to the other. And now, putting in the third rule. Okay? And the third rule is, move what's not attached to what you're looking for first. I'm looking for x. b is not attached to x. m is. All right, so I'm going to move b first. To move b, I'm going to have to subtract. So that's going to mean y minus b. So y minus b equals m times x. I'm looking for x, so I'm going to divide both sides by m. All right, so now I have y minus b over m. Perfect. Now I'm going to plug in my numbers. Okay, we were trying to find the number of pages in a book that's 100 millimeters thick. So that 100 millimeters is my y value. If I subtract the size of the cover, five millimeters, and then divide that by the number of millimeters per sheet, 0.15, I'll have the number of pages in the book. Okay, so I'm gonna take my 100 minus five, I don't know why I actually just typed that in, okay, um, because I didn't type it in right, I guess. So we'll just say it's 95, because that's what it is. 95 divided by 0.15. All right, so that book has 633 pages in it. Okay, so a line graph, which has this equation governing its relationship can be used to calculate values that aren't actually part of the experiment and thus aren't on the graph. We're doing what's called extrapolating. We're looking for something that didn't happen, but theoretically could. All right, so we're looking for a value beyond the graph. All right, so we'll very often be using this formula. This is the graphing formula for a linear graph. Y equals M times X plus B, where Y is the Y value on the graph, X is an X value on the graph that go together. Okay? M is the slope, the steepness of the line, and B is the Y intercept. That is where the line crosses the Y axis. Okay? All right, let's try a different graph. Okay, so we've got this graph that's entitled rubber band graph, okay? And what it's showing is the length of a rubber band as a result of it being stretched by a force. The units for force are newtons. That's what N stands for on that graph. So we're looking for how long will a rubber band get based on how many newtons of force is used to stretch it. Okay, so we can see that according to this graph, the more force I pull on it with, the longer it gets, okay? As force increases, that's my X value, as force increases, the rubber band gets longer, okay? So my manipulated variable in this experiment was the amount of force that I was exerting on the rubber band, and my responding variable was a measurement of the length of the rubber band in centimeters. So the equation for this graph, Y equals M times X plus B, ends up being this, y equals two times x, so in this case, our slope is two, right on the nose, plus 6.5. Okay, so what this graph is telling me is that my y-intercept, b, is six and a half, which, according to this experiment, is probably the length of the rubber band when I'm not stretching it. Okay, because when there's no force on the rubber band, According to this graph, it's six and a half centimeters long. So what I can use this graph to calculate is a couple things. Let's say I wanted to calculate how long this rubber band would get if I was to exert, um, let's say, eight newtons worth of force. Okay, That's obviously a value that's on the graph, but there's no point on the line here for that. So I want to calculate how big would the... Um, how long would the rubber band be? Well, you could argue, I'll just read it directly off the graph, okay? which you kind of could, except that that value appears to be between two sets of lines, and as a result would be an estimate. I want to calculate it exactly. All right, so I'm trying to find the length, which is the Y value, of this rubber band when it's got eight newtons, which is an X value, of force exerted on it. Right, so that's going to mean that y, the length of the rubber band, equals 
2 times 8 okay, plus the unstrained length of the rubber band, 6.5 centimeters. All right, so the 2 times 8 is 16 plus 6.5 is going to be 22.5 centimeters. And that looks like about what that would be on that graph too, because it came out to right about here. We would have to estimate. All right, our next thing that we might be asked to calculate with this particular graph, okay, now that we have the equation, would be what's the slope of this line? Okay, now the slope of the line is actually given to us right here, but only as a number. It doesn't have any units, okay? So we'd want to look at what are the units for that? So y equals m times x plus b. I'm trying to get m, the slope of the line, by itself so that I can figure out what its units are. Okay, so again, I want to follow my rules of algebra, moving what's not attached, in other words, b, first, because I'm looking for m. x is attached to m, b is not. All right, y minus b equals m times x. I want m by itself, so I'm going to divide both sides by x. All right, so y minus b over x equals m, okay, the slope of the line. Now, in math, you may have learned this formula. Rise over run, okay? And that's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, okay? You may have learned this in math. This is the same formula. This formula is this formula, okay? Because y is a y value, and so is b. And x, okay, would be um, the change in x, because at b, x is 0. Okay? So this is essentially saying y2 minus y1 over x minus 0. Okay? We're saying the same thing. All right, so back to I want to calculate the units of my slope here. Okay? So if I look at my graph, the y values are all in centimeters. The x values are all in newtons. Okay? So when I figure this out, I'm going to be going centimeters minus centimeters, which is still centimeters, divided by newtons. Right? So what I end up with is centimeters per newton. In other words, how the number of centimeters longer the rubber band gets for every newton of force that I use to stretch it. Okay? So according to this graph, that number is 2. So the, if I increase my force on the rubber band by 1 newton, it will get 2 centimeters longer. Okay, that's what this graph is saying. Okay. This is a graph that we're going to use a lot in Science 10. Position versus time. So it shows where an object is at various points in time. Okay. So what we can see here is that as time goes by, Time is the manipulated variable in this in this um, experiment, and I know that might sound weird. Okay, we're not manipulating time. Okay, we don't have a time machine. Okay, we're not going forward or backward in time. Well, we're going forward in time, but we're not going backward in time, and we're not making time run differently, it's in Doctor Who or Back to the Future or anything like that. Okay, um, all we're saying is that on this graph, the longer I wait, the farther this object will go. Because okay, it says at zero seconds, it's here. And at five seconds, it's here. And at 10 seconds, it's here. Okay, And so on and so on. So um, what we're looking at here is an object that's obviously moving. Okay? And in this case, it's moving forwards. And it's doing so at a constant velocity, or at least a nearly constant velocity, according to the line on this graph. Okay, and So what we're saying is that the amount of distance this thing covers every second is about the same. Okay, and if you if you think about it, when we we're talking about scalars and vectors the other day, okay, the amount of distance that you cover divided by the time it takes you to cover it equals speed. Okay, or your displacement or your change in position, final position minus initial position, divided by time equals your velocity. So the formula v equals d over t is actually this formula, the lines equation for this graph. All right, I'll show you what I mean. If I'm looking for velocity, 
I'm going to take the final position, which is right here, and I'm going to subtract the initial position, which is essentially down here. It's not really on the line, but you kind of get the idea. Okay, And then I'm going to divide that by the total time. The whole experiment took 15 seconds. Okay, Well, is that the same as saying y minus b over x? Well, y is a position value, okay? the final position. b is the initial position of the object, and x is the time. It's the same formula. Okay? The formula for the slope of a position versus time graph gives you velocity, average velocity. OK, so let's look at this graph and say, I want to calculate okay, what the average velocity is. Well, okay, if I asked you to do that on a test, that would be a one mark question because the answer is right there, 3.85. Okay? But let's look at why. Okay? If I want to solve for this, y equals 3.85 times x plus, actually, it'll be, yeah, plus negative 0 0.801. So our y-intercept is actually down in the negatives below zero. Okay? So if I want to calculate my average velocity, which is the slope of my line, okay, 3.85, I'm going to move the, the 0 0.801 over here. So I'm going to have y minus... Uh, negative 0 0.801, because okay, it's plus here, but it's plus a negative, so I'm going to subtract a negative. And then I'm going to divide that by x. Okay, that's going to leave me with 3.85 on this side. Now, i got to decide what my units are for that. Well, the units on my y-axis are meters. The units on my x-axis are seconds. So this is going to be meters divided by seconds. Meters per second. Okay. So the average velocity, and thus the slope of this line, is 3.85 meters per second. That's how fast this object is going. Okay, so in this experiment, probably what somebody was doing was they were recording the position of an object and timing it as it went. Okay, so uh, a good way to do that could be to have like... Um, something that dropped uh, a marker every second. And then you could just measure the distance between all the markers, and then you'd be able to plot these points. Okay? Uh, or something that left a mark on something else. Right? We're going to do something like this when we do our graphing lab. We're not going to have a machine that drops a marker. We're going to have a person that walks behind the object and puts a marker on the floor. But it'll be essentially the same thing. So let's say that in this experiment, okay, we want to calculate since we were only able to time it for 15 seconds, we want to calculate how far the object would go if it was allowed to travel for a minute. Okay, so if I know it's if I know that I want to calculate how far it goes in a minute, I know that my time, which is on the x-axis, is going to be 60 seconds. Right? Then I'm going to be calculating its final position. All right? So we're going to manipulate. I'm not, actually not going to manipulate. Y is going to equal 3.85 times 60 seconds plus the initial position of the object. According to this line, that's negative 0 0.801. So we have to take into account that it was a little ways back. Okay, so we're going to have 3.85 times 60. Whoop, works better when it's on. 3.85 times 60. Okay, and then we'll go, uh, we'll just go minus because plus a negative is the same thing, 0 0.801. Okay, so the position of this object after 60 seconds is going to be 230 meters. Okay, with a few other decimals, I'm rounding off just to be quick here. Okay, similarly, I could use this graph if I wanted to calculate how long it would take for the object to reach a position of 500 meters. Okay, so somebody asked me, calculate how long it would take this object to reach a position of 500 meters. Okay, I would know then that my y value is 500 meters. I'm essentially looking for what's x when y is 500. Okay, and that's what we were doing on the other graphs as well. When y is 500, what's x? When x is this number, what's y? So that's what we're doing here. Okay, so y equals m times x plus b. And I'm looking for x this time. So I'm going to subtract b 
and then divide by m. That's going to give me x. Okay, so we're going to take our 500 meters, subtract negative 0 0.801, because that's what b was according to our line, okay, and divide that by m, which was 3.85. So really, what I'm doing here, if you've noticed, is I'm taking my change in position and dividing it by speed, or by velocity, sorry, not speed, by velocity. Okay, well, if we do that, d over v, we're calculating t. Okay, well, that's exactly what we're doing here, calculating how long x it would take to go to a position of 500 meters. Okay, so we got 500 um, minus negative 0 0.801 and then divide that by 3.85. All right, so that's going to take 130 seconds. So 130 seconds is 2 minutes and 10 seconds. All right. Hopefully you're kind of getting the idea here of how graphs work and how a line graph works, okay? All a graph shows you is how one thing affects the other, okay? And how that one thing, the manipulated variable, affects the responding variable, okay? And can give you a numerical relationship for that.